Hey what's up guys, this is Jack Deong and welcome back to the third episode of Java Tutorial Video. In the previous episode, we have taken a closer look at the Hello World application and we have learned about things like Java Project, a little bit on classes, the man method, as well as the run workflow. Now in this episode, we are going to learn about Java variables and data types. So first thing first, what is a Java variable and data type? Variable is basically a reserved memory location to store a certain type of value. And every variable must be assigned to a data type that defines the characteristic of the data to be stored in the variable. In other words, we can think of a variable as a container that holds the value for us while the application is running. And the data type will inform the compiler about the type of the value being stored, which could be an integer, double, character, and so on. One thing that we need to take note here is that we must declare all variables before they can be used. And the most basic form of variable declaration looks something like this where we need to first specify the data type and followed by the variable's name. But what I will usually do is that I'll have both the variable declaration as well as initialization to be done in the same line of code. Other than that, Java also allows us to declare and initialize multiple variables of the same type by using just one line of code like this. And when it comes to variable declaration in Java, there are also a couple of rules that we have to obey, which includes the Java reserve word such as static, final, and nth cannot be used as a variable name. Variable name can only contain digits, letters, underscore, and the dollar sign. And lastly, the first character of a variable name must be a letter. Although Java allows you to begin your variable name with a special character, but then it has a special purpose, so it would be better to avoid them for now. Alright, now that we know some of the basic concepts, we are now going to explore the different types of variables as well as data types that are available in Java. For variables, we basically have three different types which includes the local variable, instance variable, as well as the static variable. Local variables are declared inside the method. Local variables are created when the method is entered and the variable will be destroyed once it exits the method. And the local variables are only visible within the declared method. Next, we have the instance variable and they are declared within the class but outside the method. Instance variables are created when an object of the class is created and destroyed when the object is destroyed. And the instance variables are visible for all the methods within the class. Now, it's okay if you don't understand this concept at this point because we are going to talk more about classes and objects in the later episode. Lastly, we have the static variable and they are declared within the class but outside the method as well, just at this time with a static keyword. Static variables are created when the program starts and destroyed when the program starts. The visibility of a static variable is quite similar to the instance variables. However, static variables that are declared public can also be available throughout the program by calling the variable together with the class name. And usually the static variables will be declared as a constant variable by using the final keyword, which basically means that the initial value that has been assigned to the static variable will not be changed. Alright, that's it for variables and let's move on to the data types. We can basically categorize the data type into two different categories, which are primitive data type and non-primitive data type. Primitive data types, also known as predefined data types, are the most basic data types that are available in Java. There are at different primitive data types which includes boolean, char, byte, short, in, long, float, and double. On the other hand, non-primitive data types, also known as reference data types, are considered as the more complex member of the data type family because it doesn't store the actual value in the variable but the reference to that value. A non-primitive data type can be a class, interface, or array variable. However, we will cover more about non-primitive data type in the later episode as we are going to put our focus more on the primitive data type in this tutorial. Now, I'm going to briefly go through each of these primitive data types and see what value we can store with them. Alright, so boolean data type has a default size of 1 bit and there are only two possible values which are true and false. Char data type has a default size of 16 bit and we can use it to store any character. Byte data type has a default size of add bit and we can use it to store an integer with a minimum value of negative 128 and a maximum value of 127. Short data type has a default size of 16 bit and we can use it to store an integer with a minimum value of negative 32,000 and a maximum value of 32,000. Int data type has a default size of 32 bit and we can use it to store an integer with a minimum value of negative 2 billion and a maximum value of 2 billion. Long data type has a default size of 64 bit and we can use it to store an integer with a minimum value of negative 9 quintillion and a maximum value of 9 quintillion. Float data type has a default size of 32-bit 
and we can use it to store a single precision floating point numbers. And lastly, double data type has a default size of 64 bit and we can use it to store a double precision floating point numbers. All right, to conclude this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys an example. I'm going to store two integers into two different variables then we will sum them up and store it in another variable and lastly we will display the end result on the screen. Let's see how we can do that. So open up your Eclipse and the first thing we're going to do is to declare and initialize the two variables first. Then we are going to sum them up and store it into another variable. Lastly we will display it on the screen via the Java standard output stream. Now let's try to run our program and see if everything's okay. Perfect. Alright, that's it guys. We have learned about Java variables and data types in this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you liked the video, be sure to hit on the like button, share it to your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.